A warm welcome to you to um, St. Kenlock's Church here in Mr. Gunlies uh, on the eighth Sunday after Trinity. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you and keep you in the love of Christ. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us knowledge of your truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In a moment of silence, let us now examine our consciences and prepare to confess our sins before God. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us and set us free from sin, strengthen us in goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect and the Readings for the Eighth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern us in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you asked my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There once was a man who went to the same restaurant every day to enjoy a bowl of soup. When he finished on the first day, the waitress asked him, Did you enjoy your soup, sir? To which he replied, Yes, I did, but you only gave me two slices of bread. On the second day, when the man received his soup, the waitress presented him with four slices of bread. Again, when he had finished, she asked him, did you enjoy your soup, sir? To which he replied, Yes, it was beautiful, but you didn't give me enough bread. On the next day, the manager of the restaurant served the man and brought him the soup du jour with six slices of bread. When he had finished his soup, the manager asked him, Did you enjoy your soup, sir? To which the man replied that he did, but he had expected more bread. Very early the following morning, the restaurant manager went to the bakery next door and asked him to bake a loaf that measured two feet. Sure enough, the man came to the restaurant for his soup of the day. The manager cut the loaf of bread from the top to the bottom and presented it in front of the man, one half on the left-hand side of the bowl of soup and the other half on the right-hand side. When he had finished his meal, the man went over to the till to pay for his soup, and the manager asked him, Well, sir, did you enjoy your meal? To which the man replied, Yes, I did enjoy, but I see you've gone back to serving two slices of bread with the soup. Hmm. Well, I suppose none of us always appreciate fully what we are given, 
We cannot value the gifts presented to us sometimes. And in today's readings, there is a theme of giving and the receiving of gifts. We don't actually see anything about gifts in the first reading. The story we heard about uh, was about Jacob wrestling with God at Peniel. In the verses before these, we read about his plan to present gifts of hundreds of cattle, donkeys, sheep, camels, and goats as a peace offering to his twin brother Esau, whom he had offended. Jacob was terrified of meeting Esau again, but he sought reconciliation by bearing gifts. The verses which follow the wrestling bout with God tells us about the meaning, uh, about the meeting, and how Esau embraces Jacob without really wanting the gifts offered. But he does accept them as a recognition of Jacob's efforts to make amends. In today's second reading, Paul writes about his great sorrow and unceasing anguish about the, fellow, uh, uh, the failure of his fellow Israelites for having not recognised God's gifts to them over the centuries. The gift of being adopted as the chosen people of God, the special relationship and the covenant, the receiving of the law and the commandments, the promises and the worship, the gift of people like Abraham and Moses, and most of all, the Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is distraught that his own people did not recognise Jesus as the greatest gift of all, that they did not recognise him as the promised Messiah. And then in the Gospel we heard about the gift of the five loaves and the two fish, a gift which the disciples considered too little to feed the thousands gathered in the deserted place. We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish, they said. You can almost hear the sarcasm in those words. But of course, in Jesus' hands, the things which appear to have very little potential provide a feast and a banquet which signifies what God, or what heaven may be like. Jesus often compared a meal with heaven, the banquet of heaven. On numerous occasions, we hear about him eating with all kinds of different people, telling parables about kings welcoming everyone to, into a feast. And here, there is a miracle which tells us that heaven can be created with very little and with gifts which we may consider insignificant. Gifts which in the end become so great that there are 12 basketfuls uh, left over. Last week we heard about the mustard seed becoming a tree large enough to provide a home for all the known birds in the world. These are signs of God working in the ordinary, in the things which we see every day. It is a sign of the incarnation showing us that God is within us and in his creation. It is the same gift that was born a vulnerable child in a stable and was put to death on a cross. Even though he seems weak to those who cannot recognise him, he is the promised gift which can change our lives. He is the gift given to us as the loaves and the fish were given to the disciples in order to be shared with those around them. We are called to share Christ with others, for them to be nourished too, and for them to recognise him in what may seem so insignificant and so negligible. I suppose the man who had his soup in the restaurant failed to see the gift of hospitality offered to him. The waitress and the manager tried their hardest to please him, but he couldn't recognise their efforts. Esau appreciated Jacob's substantial gifts in the end, whilst Paul's fellow Israelites failed to acknowledge the abundant gifts poured upon them and their ancestors. Jesus used the little he was offered in order that his disciples could then provide for the thousands. Do we value the tiniest gifts we are provided with? Do we offer those gifts to our Lord? Do we allow him to help us share with those in need in our world? Or do we say that we enjoy the things of God, but that we don't really have enough to feed a hungry world? 
Do we ask for more for ourselves without recognizing the true gift of God's love and generosity? We now affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in today's Gospel we have heard how Jesus took pity on the crowd. So it is with confidence that we place our needs before you in his name. For John, our Archbishop and Bishop, and for the whole Church of God, that each one of us may recognise the gifts you have given us to build up your kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For leaders of nations and governments everywhere, that the hungry may be fed, that the thirsty may be quenched, and that justice may prevail. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our communities and all our neighbours, that the good works of people amongst us may be recognised and be an inspiration for others to follow. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who have presented us with gifts during our lives, that their example may give us generous hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who suffer because of the effects of coronavirus, for the sick, the unemployed and the anxious, that they may be comforted and given the help they need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who have died, and especially our loved ones, that they may come to the joy of the eternal banquet of heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, hear the prayers of the family of your church, in mercy and love, unite all your children, wherever they may be, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Love in all sincerity, never pay back evil for evil. If possible, so far as it lies with you, live at peace with all. May the peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you.
Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, and to your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made, and to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, and to your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks, Holy Father, all powerful and ever-living God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who by his death is destroyed death, and by his rising to life again has restored to us eternal life. And so with the hosts of angels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim the glory of your name and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All praise and thanks to you, true and living God, creator of all things, giver of life. You formed us in your own image, but we have marred that image and fall short of your glory. We give you thanks that you sent your Son to share our life. You gave him up to death that the world might be saved, and you raised him from the dead that we might live in him and he in us. Sanctify with your Spirit this bread and wine, your gifts to us, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Saviour Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. As he has promised, uh, commanded us, Father, we remember Jesus Christ, your Son, proclaiming his victorious death, rejoicing in his resurrection, and waiting for him to come in glory. We bring to you this bread, this cup. Accept our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Restore and revive your people. Renew us and all for whom we pray with your grace and heavenly blessing. And at the last, receive us with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints into that unending joy promised by your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him. In unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, his love is everlasting. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard your word be deaf to clamour and dispute. May the tongues which have sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be refreshed with the fullness of your life. Glory to you forever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. May Christ, who nourishes you with himself, the living bread and the true vine, make you one in praise and service, and raise you up at the last day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ.